Paul Bigner's phrase, the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics is acknowledged by everyone, but um, I don't think people take it as seriously as, as I think they should because it's, it speaks so powerfully to the nature of reality. Um, you've obviously dealt with mathematics and physics in your own career. How, how, do, how do you feel about that? Let me tell you a little story. When I was 16, I specialized just in science subjects, but at my high school, I'd taken a fancy to a young lady named Lindsay, and she was doing only uh, the art subjects. And so the only time we'd ever meet is in the school library. And I remember one day she sat opposite me, uh, and I was sitting there doing a homework exercise. And I remember what it was. It was trying to determine the range of a ball thrown up an inclined plane, a sort of standard high school exercise. And I was working away. And she looked over and she said, what are you doing there? And I explained about uh, this ball and the range and so on. She said, but how can you do that by writing things on a piece of paper? <laughs> and I thought at the time, well, it's stupid. You know, this is my homework. That's what you do. I've been told that these are the laws of physics and you, you work it out, get the equations. But of course, it's a very, very profound observation that human mathematics mirrors the world in this unreasonable way that not only can we determine trajectories of objects, we can work out the properties of atoms and molecules and black holes and galaxies and so on by applying human mathematics. Now notice I'm using that word human. So I'm using this term human mathematics uh, advisedly because as far as we know it, mathematics uh, is infinitely broad, but the mathematics that applies in the real world and which can be grasped by human beings and applied to the real world is a very, very tiny subset of that. And so the mystery for me is not why does mathematics work in the world, but why does mathematics that human beings have the ability to understand and manipulate work so well in the real world? Why is it that this uh, species, Homo sapiens, has evolved the capability of uh, doing these, uh, this type of abstract reasoning and doing these mathematical procedures, uh, some of which are quite hard, uh, in a way that is so extraordinarily effective in grasping the nature of so many physical phenomena. They're, they're, now, a lot of people just shrug this aside, uh, but I don't think there's anything in our evolutionary history uh, that compels human beings to develop the cognitive architecture necessary to do this. Our brains, our minds have evolved, like our bodies, uh, to survive in the proverbial jungle. And so, of course, it will be useful to be able to uh, count and work out angles and so on. But there's absolutely no reason why we should have the level of mathematics necessary to explain, for example, the nature of black holes or the structure of the hydrogen atom or anything like that. Uh, these are things uh, beyond any sort of reasonable survival value. Uh, so is it just a coincidence that the mathematics that we evolved to cope with just for basic survival also just happens to work so well in so many areas of reality? I, I don't believe in coincidences like that. I think uh, it, it means that the human mind uh, has evolved, and the mind, not the brain, I'm talking about the human mind has evolved uh, to somehow mirror the nature of reality in a very deep way. I, I think it's a non-trivial fact. It sounds a little bit mystical. It sounds like uh, somehow we are meant to be here or that we are players in the great cosmic drama in this very fundamental way. Yes, I think, I think we are. Uh, and I, it's one of these facts that uh, I regard as uh, giving huge significance to human life. A lot, of, a lot of people think significance in human life is what I do in my daily life and being, living a good life, being a good person. But I think uh, an even deeper significance is the fact that we are plugged in to that deep level of reality through mathematics. And in that view, you are distinctly in the minority among at least the physicists and mathematicians and scientists that I know. Right. Uh, uh, you don't uh, deny that you're in that minority uh, in that thinking, uh, uh, a place that you apparently like to like to inhabit. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I freely admit that uh, most of my colleagues would not agree with me. Uh, on the other hand, they don't give very coherent accounts uh, of why mathematics is so useful in, in physics either. Uh, and so I often will provoke them 
by saying things like, well, where did the laws of physics come from and why do they have this elegant mathematical form that they do? Uh, and they really don't have an answer to that. Yeah, it's the ultimate brute fact to, to pure materialist mathematicians uh, who would have the universe come from nothing, but their nothing is the laws of quantum physics, which were always there in right. some way. Right, and they'll say, well, that's just the way the world is, right. uh, that you so, just accept it and get on with the job. Uh, and, and, and the you world is not, uh, is not, has no obligation to satisfy you, your interests. And so what it's doing, it's doing, and we can discover that, but let's not read anything into it artificial beyond what it is. It is what it is, and maybe we'll never understand it. And the, and why, why should it? Why should the universe cater to this one species on this isolated planet in the one little arm of a one galaxy out of a hundred trillion or a hundred billion or more? Uh, well, I, don't, I see, I don't think it would be unique. I think if there is intelligent life out there, and I'm still open-minded about that, then uh, they would be along the same path, because I think there is something about the emergence of life and intelligence that plugs into this deep mm. nature of reality. So, so be, you, you're seeing this as a sort of quasi-religious view. It's very far from traditional religion, but it is a belief uh, that in this great scheme of things, uh, human beings uh, are one representative of uh, this uh, deep place that life and mind has in the unfolding scheme of the universe. So we have gone from what everyone admits to be the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in, in describing the world, to taking it as, 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 a, as a deep probe of what reality is and sees more meaning and purpose in the totality of, of reality. So how, how do you take that forward? I don't like brute facts. Uh, but so people can say, well, that's just the way the world is. But I have this type of inquiring mind where I want to know, well, why, why is it that way? And I don't think it just stops with the phenomena of the world. It goes right down to the laws. Why are the laws what they are? And could they be different? And are they different in other regions? And so on. These are inevitably questions that I'm going to tangle with. And I just think this connection between our ability to describe the world through human mathematics uh, must say something very profound about uh, the, na the nature of the human mind, and I think by implication any other minds that might be out there. So this is built very deeply uh, into the structure of the uni universe, I claim. And your question is, how can we take that forward? Is there any way in which we can explore that through experimentation and so on? Well, it could be refuted if we uh, get to some point where there are some basic uh, physical phenomena which are simply not describable by human mathematics, utterly beyond us. I can imagine uh, that, that we would just simply get stuck. Um, so most of my, uh, the same theoretical physicists, which don't think there's anything very significant, are also the ones who say, well, we'll explain everything. Uh, yeah, we're we're yeah. going to be so good. This, this procedure, this mathematics is so good that, that there's nothing that's going to be beyond us. So, uh, if we hit something that is uh, beyond us, maybe uh, the, the, the we'll all be rethinking that. That's one way. The other way is that uh, as we move into the realm of artificial intelligence, I could imagine that there will be some aspects of the world which we find baffling, which some AI would contemplate and say, oh, uh, I have applied mathematics to this. I, uh, I understand it. Uh, for, for me, everything falls together nicely. But uh, you simply lack uh, the conceptual framework for me to be able to communicate to you what the answer is. Like the famous, uh, 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 in uh, Douglas Adams' story, the computer at the end of the universe. At the end of the answer is 42. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, I can imagine that that might happen. And so that would be uh, one way of... Uh, uh, refuting my claim that there's something rather special about okay. human beings in this respect.